Dean Russell. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And um, I would also like to thank the member for Don Matt Valley for the work that he's done to make sure that we secure this uh, debate today. I have to say I, I'm a little bit disappointed because I would have hoped on a debate about half of the nation that the benches would be a bit more full in this place. But uh, perhaps that's a sig signal of what, what the challenge is, because often when we talk about men's issues, we don't talk about men's issues. And I think the difficulty on a debate like today, where we should be celebrating all of the immense um, impacts that men have across society, um, I'm afraid my speech will probably focus on the same as others, which is about mental health and suicide, and the fact that we should be talking more and encouraging men to talk more about the challenges that they are facing. Um, but men contribute so much to society, and I wish I was here uh, with full benches uh, talking about the immense impact that men have for good in our society, just as we would do if this was uh, Women's International Day, where we would quite, quite rightly be celebrating the impact they have uh, for us all. I would just like to start with uh, a point, really, that I've, I've mentioned many times in this place, which is about mental health and the need for greater support for mental health. Um, I did a 10-minute rule bill, which I, I'm going to try and bring back at some point, uh, to make sure that mental health first aid awareness is part of normal first, first aid, uh, physical first aid within the workplace. Because I think one of the challenges is that people, and men in particular, don't know how to talk about issues that they might be facing. And they don't always have to wait until it's the worst time that it's all affected them in a way that is visible, but actually should be able to talk early in the stages uh, of, of um, challenges that they might be facing. And I think part of the challenge that we have in society is this idea that men are supposed to be all strong, uh, as, as the Right Honourable Member just mentioned now, that this idea of, you know, almost the physical nature that men had to have. You know, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers and the uh, Sylvester Stallones from the 1980s that I grew up with, you know, it was about this idea of, you know, you're ultimately strong. You, you should not show weakness, because as a man, if you show weakness, you are weak. But actually, I say the opposite. I say to show a weakness, to talk about a weakness, to ask for help. That is the greatest strength that you can have. And the challenge for many is that they aren't asking, they aren't looking for that support because they don't always know where to go for it. They don't know who they can trust who won't mock them, who won't ask them questions of things that perhaps they don't feel comfortable talking about. And I think this has been exacerbated, as was mentioned earlier, around social media. Uh, Andy Warhol had the very famous statement that in the future everyone would have 15 minutes of fame. I say sadly now it's 15 minutes of shame because when you raise a concern, you get mocked for it. If you're not popular, then somehow um, that's a reason why people can attack you. They can say horrid things to you and move on to the next person. We see it in politics. I often call it, um, sadly, uh, sniper politics, the idea that you take out one individual, in, uh, whether it be in politics or celebrity or uh, in, in our community, where uh, there's just a pile on. Uh, a hate pile on of, of people being vile to people um, in a moment and then moving on to their next victim and their next victim. And so is it any wonder that men and women, but I think men in the case of this debate, feel awkward raising concerns, talking to their friends in a way that might be shared or, or, or laughed at. But I don't think it has to be that way. I think there's lots of opportunities for men to take control of their lives by asking others to help them. And I think one of those areas is by forming stronger networks and by also having a society where uh, we do help each other and we listen to each other and we share that. And I think that's where debates like today are so important and why I applaud uh, the member for Don Valley, especially after the, the, uh, the pile-on he had last year from making comments in this place. Because the truth is, you know, when you're attacked in such a way, to come back as he has done today uh, uh, in a place that could have been quite vulnerable and open for attack, actually he's come back to, to say, no, I do believe in this. This is a strong place to be in. And actually, that is a strength because sometimes it's hard to go against the grain. Sometimes it's hard to talk about issues that, that perhaps others don't always agree with. And that's where this place is so important. That's why I would have loved the benches to be full of people talking about the challenges they face because we are ultimately, whether people like us or not, role models. And I think within society, we have to look at how role models play a part. 
whether that be teachers in schools, whether that be um, uh, sp sports people, whether it be the doctor or the nurse uh, down the road who's working uh, perhaps at a care home. You know, all of these people across society are people that young kids, boys and girls, but boys in the case of this, this debate, can look up to and see a career option and actually break down some of those barriers. You know, when people think of nurses, they should think of men and women. When they think of uh, care home workers, they should think of men and women. They should not just think of a particular type of role for a particular type of, of uh, person. But I think the other area within that is also thinking about um, places like gyms. Uh, I, I've recently visited a uh, gym in my own constituency of Watford called NRG. I visited one called Cage Fit previously, and I was hearing amazing stories actually of people who do MMA, the, the, the fighting. Uh, thankfully, I didn't get in the ring. Uh, I, I don't think I would have fared too well. But, um, but the, what they were talking about was actually how the impact of going to gyms like that actually fight. Uh, the phrase that was used when I was ch chatting to one of the gentlemen was. Once they learn that they can fight in the ring for money, they don't want to fight on the streets for free. Mm -hmm. And the point was really about uh, antisocial behaviour, about kids who are perhaps in areas or in difficult circumstances, perhaps being encouraged to join gangs, of going to join a gym, to get, get around other positive role models, but also learning that they have value in other ways through their physique or, or through their mental capacity. Yeah, please. I'm grateful for the, uh, the member for what we're giving away and I think he's really hit on something here about we shouldn't be shy of having masculinity coming forward. It's how you use it in a positive way forward, be it in sport, be it in going to the gym or being a father figure. This is really, really important. If we try and close that down, it closes status. If we close status, we produce people's bad mental health. So does he support that philosophy after what he's seen in his gym? Oh, absolutely. I, I thank the uh, honourable uh, friend from uh, Bosworth uh, for the work that he does, especially around um, physical attributes and making sure that people um, online uh, don't feel um, through uh, their body image that they, are, they, they should be attacked. But I absolutely agree. I think there's an element of surrounding oneself with, with role models, but also feeling like you can be the best version of you. And I think that's the challenge that we often see, is that we're, we're creating a, a society, potentially partly through uh, online media, of, of shaping people to be something that they are not, that they can use uh, digital, uh, whatever they're called, digital tools to change the way they look online, and then they compare themselves in the mirror to that unrealistic ideal, that they perhaps see... Oh, yes, absolutely. Sorry, and, and, yeah, he's making an, an excellent speech. He's talking about the impact, the negative impact sometimes of, of online social media and, and pylons and things like that. But does he not also agree that the more time boys particularly are spending online, the less time they're spending offline, having in, in the physical presence of other young men and boys, doing things like climbing trees, you know, taking appropriate risks and doing the kind of things that really will improve their mental health and their physical health much more than sitting in bedrooms alone uh, on the internet? I, I, I... My honourable friend makes an incredibly important point, and I know this is an area that she uh, understands incredibly well and has done incredible work in this space. Absolutely, 100%. You know, of course there's a place for digital, there's a place for social media, there's a place for the internet, but if that becomes the world that you exist in, that has to be a bad thing. You know, it's, you know, girls climb trees too, but they boys can climb trees with girls, you know, and the point being is that, you know, going out into the real world and spending time with real people and, and learning those social cues, understanding the challenges that one faces and also understanding how, you know, rejection is, a, is something that you can learn in the real world and in the, in the virtual world. But actually, you learn how to deal with it with friends. You learn how to deal with it through, uh, through talking about it. And I suppose my point really is, uh, coming back to a statement I used in my uh, maiden speech, is that I often say there's a, I use an acro acronym of HOPE. And I say that HOPE is an acronym and stands for H-O-P-E, help one person every day. So help one person every day. And I, the reason why I use that is that sometimes that one person has to be yourself. Sometimes that person has to be to be able to say, look, I need to go and speak to somebody about how I'm feeling. I need to perhaps go to the pub on a Friday night and have a laugh with my friends and, and chat about stuff that's helped, that's uh, been challenging me or issues that I've got and not feel like I have to keep this uh, all inside. Um, I'll start to round up, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm conscious there aren't many speakers. I, I won't speak for, for the full uh, hour left. But uh, <laughs> although, although, 
although Madam Deputy Speaker knows that I probably could. <laughs> but, um, but what I, I did want to just come to a, a couple of important points, which is about suicide, and we've, we've talked about this uh, in this debate already. Men are invariably more likely to take their lives than women. And that's a saddening statistic. And it's the same around the world, I understand. In the UK, we have to try and stop this. Um, it's not just about speaking to people. It's about making sure the network is there. But also for those who've gone through that process and sadly um, got to the point of perhaps trying to take their own lives, making sure they have the support long term. And it's one of the points I would make to, to the Minister is making sure that we have the mental health support uh, for young people and, and all alike so that they have that long term support to, uh, to um, get through these challenging times. I recently visited the Samaritans in Watford and found that they do incredible work to make sure that they're end of the line for somebody and, and of course there's anonymity there to be able to make sure that they're supported. But one of the things I am proud of within Hertfordshire is that Hertfordshire County Council, they have this as one of their top priorities. They want to create a county which is suicide free and I want to create a country which is suicide free. Uh, but we only do that by talking about it. We only do that by each one of us in each of our constituencies going back and saying that we need to make this a top priority. We need to save lives, we need to change lives, and we need to make sure that the next generation knows this is important. So just as I, I, I finish, I'm going to finish with a, a statement that I made the last time I spoke in International Men's Day, which is just to remind anybody who might be watching this, um, watching this debate that they should ask others if they're okay. Not just once, not just twice, but every time they see them. And they should also ask themselves, am I really okay? Because by doing that, we can make sure that we have a society that cares, that people can be signposted to the help they need, but also make sure that we really do deliver a compassionate country that saves lives, changes lives, and makes people the ability, or giving them the ability to be the best they can be. Thank you.